Hey guys, what's going on? In today's video, we are going to be taking this giant Kubera snapper head and turning it into a nice pair of jaws just like this. Now this is also a Kubera snapper. This one we caught in Mexico this September and it's been in our deep freezer since then. This one we caught in the Florida Keys also in September, but September of 2020. So both fish caught in September, one in the Florida Keys, one in Mexico. So we actually weighed both of these fish when we caught it. This one was 45 pounds, this one was 49 pounds. I feel like this one's jaw is going to look a lot bigger than this one, but it'll be very interesting to compare the two once we finally get it to this point. This is also a little Kubera snapper jaw. This one was more like six pounds. Victor caught this one off of the bridge, also in the Florida Keys. This is something really cool to do to preserve your catch, have yourself a nice little trophy. If you guys know about taxidermy and fish mounts, they are very, very expensive. This is a cool way to kind of keep your catch as have a nice little memory for you for less than like $10. If you guys know anything about fish mounts, they are very, very expensive. This is really, really easy to do. All you need is some boiling water, some glue, and some hydrogen peroxide, and possibly an old toothbrush. Before we put this in the boiling water, when Victor made these jaws, he actually made fish head soup with his giant Kubera um, head. Now you can totally do that if you want to do this with some kind of fish and make fish head soup. Um, if you've never had it before, it's absolutely delicious. I will put Victor's video linked down in the description. However, that was a very, very fresh fish head. It was never frozen. It was taken very good care of. This one, however, has been in the freezer since September. So we're getting close to like two months that it's been in the freezer. It's got a bunch of coagulated blood that's frozen in there. The gills are still in the head. So I'm not going to make fish head soup out of this. You could 100% if it was fresh. I'm gonna prefer not to do that. We also didn't scale this thing. There's gonna be a ton of scales in the pot when we did this. Scaling it is another really important thing so you don't have scales in your soup. There is a lot of meat on a fish head, so you can totally make soup out of it. However, I am not with this particular one. All we're gonna do is get a cool fish mat out of it, which I think is an awesome thing to do. Instead of just tossing your fish head into the water, never seeing it again, you can make something really neat and cool out of it. I'm going to be doing this outside because if I do this inside, it's gonna smell. The fish head is also huge, so I obviously needed a very large pot to do this. If you wanna do it inside, you can do that as well, but we got this little burner outside that has boiling water in it right now. So, I'm gonna put this big old fish head, for comparison to my head, <laughs> into this thing here. Uh-oh, I actually thought it was gonna lay sideways in there. We'll see if we have enough water. Adios. I don't know exactly how long this is gonna take. I will obviously update you guys when we get to that point. But basically what we're doing is we're boiling it down. Once all the meat and everything falls apart, the bones will separate and that way we can find the pieces that we need to make our jaw mount. Well, if you ever go to do this, make sure you have enough propane to even finish the job. I walk out here, lift the lid off to check on it and it's not boiling anymore. And I'm like, literally ran out of propane. So we're gonna get back to business here. Now it's taking longer than it would have. We got set back a little bit, but that's the beauty of this is you could cook this for four hours. You could cook it for 30 minutes. You don't want to overcook it. But the main thing is, is you just want to separate it from the bone. That's it. You can't really overdo it. If you, The only way you could overdo it is if you go on for hours and hours and hours and you start to disintegrate the bone, but I don't see that happening. It has not done much yet. But as you can see, it's starting to turn white a little bit, the skin coming off, but meat not even cooked. Like, I don't think it even cooked for very long before we lost the propane. Well, now we are back in business. Now, again, I will let you know how long it takes. <laughs> Okay, so we turned off the heat. It's been maybe 30 minutes. And since we've done this before, I know exactly how many pieces I'm looking for. I need eight jaw pieces to make this mount. So I had some tongs and I just like was pulling at it and I already pulled out one of the pieces that I'm pretty sure that I need. 
This is like weird cartilage stuff that regardless of how long I leave it in there is like not gonna cook off. This as well. That's not mean. This is part of my upper jaw. This is another part that I know for sure that I need right here. Definitely need these. That's the two bottom jaw pieces. So we got two bottom jaws, one part of the top jaw. It's the other part of the top jaw. Definitely not as big of its teeth as the other one it's looking like. Okay. I'm sure the neighborhood cats are gonna be smelling this. I'm missing one piece. Oh boy, this is what I didn't want to happen to completely fall apart. That's it. Right there. Yep. Okay. See that one? Yeah. Was that like an injury? Mm, he's got ginger bites. Luckily, since we've done this before, we know exactly how many pieces that we're looking for which is eight pieces. This actually only had six pieces. Victor threw away um, this piece right here that should have gone in this little slip here. It's kind of like a little puzzle to put together, but you got your two jaw pieces, your two top pieces, and then you got these two pieces that go here. And on this little one, we had this little piece that was supposed to go there, which is this pointy piece here. But once I clean these all up, you'll be able to see them better. So that's what I'm gonna start doing now is cleaning these up a little bit better. And then there's also something to note is all those bones right there, you can make an entire skull mount, but that takes a very long time. If you just want a basic jaw mount, you're looking for these eight pieces, but you could certainly use every single one of those bones and make the entire head mount. This is just a jaw mount. Our friend Joey Antonelli on YouTube actually does a lot of jaw mounts. He's done a ton of different species and he has some videos on them as well. And he likes to do the entire head mount, not just the jaw mount. So if you guys are interested in seeing the entire head mount, make sure you check out his channel, but time to get cleaning. So the next step is basically getting off any of the like weird cartilage stuff that's just really loose. So this is not meat, like I said. It's like this weird gelatin, which I guess it's cartilage. What do you think, Mick? Uh, I don't know. I don't Tissue? know the proper terminology. I don't know, but it's not meat. And if you leave any of this gross stuff on here that you don't end up getting and it dries, it's gonna smell. It's the joints. Yeah, like joints. Yeah, I guess that's probably what it is. But it's, as you can see, it's like this weird gelatin stuff. So when I put it in the hydrogen peroxide, it's gonna eat at this stuff and really help with the process of removing it. But that's basically what I'm, what I'm trying to do is rip off all the big stuff. I got this pin that's kind of helping me do it. But it's just weird, gross, Looks like lobster meat. Rubbery, yeah, like uncooked lobster meat. Yeah, look at this. Mm -hmm. So that's my next step and then we'll put it in hydrogen peroxide. So here are the jaws before I put them in hydrogen peroxide. I tried my best to get out as much of that gelatin, cartilage, joint, whatever kind of stuff that is. This piece looks like he had some kind of injury at some point. Like a hole in that part of the jaw. So yeah, now time for the hydrogen peroxide. You want these completely submerged. All right, and there we go. All right, so we are closing in on around 40 hours of sitting in the peroxide. We've got a lot of bubbles going on. I probably could have just left them in there for like 24 hours, not much has changed, but I was kind of busy yesterday, so I never got around to it. But 
as you can tell, much whiter than the way they started out as. They look really nice. So now I think I'm gonna give them one last brush and then rinse them off nicely and get them drying so we can start gluing it together. Oh yeah, looking real nice. Nothing like a little wine and arts and crafts night, am I right? Cheers. <laughs> all right, time for the fun part that we've all been waiting for, putting the jaws together. So I've had them drying now for maybe like five-ish hours and now it's time to put them together. Like I had said, we needed eight pieces. These are the eight pieces laid out here. There is two top jaws. They got this big protruding bone there. So these will go together like this. And we got the two bottom pieces with the teeth. These will go together like this. Then you have these pointy ones that will go in each side of the bottom jaw just like that. And then this top piece that will go just like this on top of the jaw. Something that I wanted to note was when I was boiling the head, I didn't let it get to the point where it completely disintegrated where all the bones just fell down to the bottom of the pot because I wanted to be able to pull out the pieces that I knew I needed very easily. So by not letting it get to the point where it was just all falling apart, I was able to look at the face and pull those eight pieces out pretty easily besides the one that had fallen out. But if you've never done this before, keeping it to the point where it isn't completely destroyed, where you have a ton of pieces to have to go through, it's easy to just look at the face and grab out those few pieces just by the mouth because the head is huge and there's a lot of bones to go through if you let it get completely disintegrated. Another thing I wanna know before I start gluing everything together, it is not going to be perfect. As you remember, there's those big chunks of meat and cartilage, joint, and whatever it is. So realistically, none of these bones are ever touching at any point However, I am gluing them all together with barely any glue, so they're all gonna be touching. So, unfortunately, it's not a perfect puzzle. There is going to be, you know, a little bit of gaps in kind of you deciding where you think things need to go because realistically, they were never touching to begin with. So, you have to find some kind of place that you think works to put the pieces together to glue them. I opted for a hot glue gun instead of like super glue or any kind of glue like that because I like fast, quick results and I'm here by myself. So trying to hold pieces together and like wait for them to dry is a little bit difficult. So I'm going with the hot glue gun. The first thing I'm starting with, I think, is putting this piece into the jaw here. So probably just like put a little glue here, shove it in there, and hope for the best. <laughs> this one actually has a little bit of a broken part to the top of the jaw. It's not gonna be perfect because these things are just not really perfect. They're different from one side to the other. Ow, crap, I already burned myself. <laughs> ah! Oh God. I think I turned my glue gun on too early. Okay, I did it again. Okay. Here we go. Okay, I think I wanted it like that. Maybe we'll add a little more glue. Oh my gosh, I have like this giant glue ball there because it's just like melting out because it's too melted. Maybe I should unplug it for a second. Ah! You guys have ever used hot glue before? All right, I need to unplug this because this is way too melty. Ah! Things are going very well. That is done. Time for the other side. Test where I want it. Make it similar to the other side. Okay. How many times will I burn myself before I finish the task? Okay. Just like that. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's hot. <laughs> Need a break. So now something that's interesting was when we first made the other two jaws, 
they were just as white as this one and then they kind of have yellowed over the year or so so this one i think will probably do the same eventually turn slightly yellow but they do start out a lot more white i leave them inside so i don't know why they yellow but that's what they've done another piece that could go multiple different ways like it doesn't fit perfect so i'm kind of just trying to decide which way that i want it which as long as i do the same thing on both sides then we should be okay find the best place to add glue kind of inconspicuously now these are something that i leave out as like home decor um oh gosh i have a glue stick i'm sure that this is the kind of thing that not everyone would like to display in their home we did just go through spooky season, so maybe you just want to put it out for like Halloween. But I like it. I mean, that's just the kind of person that I am. But I'll tell you something, it is a great conversation like starter. Everyone who walks into this house, I swear, ask about these things. They're very, very cool. So I like leaving them out as home decor, but you know, to each their own. <laughs> I like it. It's coming together. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Unfortunately, you know, there's no directions to follow with this, so no idea if I'm doing this correct, but at least it looks like it. Good thing I put this craft paper down because we got a hot glue mess going on over here. There's that top piece, glued it in there. Just like that. The other top one. And then the bottom. This was like one of those things where I didn't know this went on the back side or this one on the front side and I just kind of did what I thought looked the best. See how this one right here is touching? This one, if you can see, didn't touch because it's like missing a piece. I don't think that happened in the boiling process. I think that was something with his jaw. So there's a difference right there. When deciding how to glue these together, trying to figure out exactly what angle to put them at is slightly difficult, like close together, out further, you know, it's kind of hard to tell. But whatever you're gonna end up doing here, you're kind of gonna have to mimic up top I think the top is a little more obvious so maybe i'll do the top and then match the bottom to the top i don't really remember what i did in the past all i know is that i definitely had victor here to help me hold things so it's a little more difficult to do by yourself wish me luck okay here we go these don't even really connect all that well together because i there was probably a good half inch, maybe even more of like that gelatin stuff in between there. So these never probably touched to begin with. And here I am trying to make them touch with glue. So, you know, it's not perfect, but it works. Just glued those together in the center. There are our top jaws. Pretty cool. This is gonna be the trickiest part because this angle is going to determine how this glues on. Obviously, if it's too wide, this has nothing to like attach to. Uh-oh, <gasps> this is falling apart. Oh heavens. When in doubt, add more glue. All right, so I think I found where I need to glue the bottom jaw based on where the top jaw is gonna line up. This is going to be the most difficult part. Something like this. Oh boy, here we go. Okay, something like this. Put this here. That's the angle we need. All right, well, my camera battery died in the middle of me gluing the top part to the bottom part, but this is the final product. Um, 
if you compare the two of these, I think I made this one a little less wide. It's a little skinnier versus this one. Does that matter? I don't know. I don't know exactly how wide it should have been. That would have been determined on how I had glued this part and this part together. So you just really need to concentrate on when you glue the four, like the two top pieces and the two bottom pieces together to get that perfect angle. And that's gonna determine how wide it is at the end. They're honestly so similar in size, the two of these, but I'll give you guys a little close up. So here we go. There was that spot, some injury in the past, but I think it turned out pretty darn good. If you compare, this is the Keys one to the Mexico one. If you look at those top teeth, the Keys one is definitely bigger than the Mexico, as well as the bottom teeth. Look at that. We do have a Lincod jaw in the deep freezer that we brought home from Alaska. So if you guys are interested in seeing that video, then comment down below. Um, we've only ever done Kubera snapper jaws before, so it would definitely be a learning experience to try to put that giant lingcod mouth together, but I think it would be really, really cool. I would love to do like a really big mangrove snapper to compare it to a Kubera snapper to see which one's teeth are bigger. This was like a six pound Kubera snapper, so like a six pound mangrove snapper would be really cool. You could also do kingfish. Um, Barracudas, Wahoo, they have really big teeth, so that would be really cool to see. I'm sure even just like a small mackerel or something that has cool teeth would be a good fish to do something like this with. Although it was a lot of tedious work to get to this point, I think it is a very neat thing to have to commemorate a really great catch of yours and, you know, just have a really cool memory besides having a photo or to spend the money on a big fish mount. You know, if you wanna do a project with kids or, I mean, I had a lot of fun doing this, so it's a project for all ages, but as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video.